ho 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 welcome to the unqualified film bros podcast for a very special holiday season episode of the show it's our second to last of 2022 um we got an expanded panel tonight aiden's back he's joining us for i think the fourth time third time somewhere in there with you i think it's just the second but we'll count later (laughs) we'll count him later yeah um (laughs) So, uh, as you can tell by my very festive hat and the fact that I started off the episode by saying ho, 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 we are talking about one of the two Christmas comedies uh, that's worth seeing, in my opinion, um, this holiday season. Wait, I'm not talking about Spirited. We're talking about Violent Night. But you have to preface that with that came out this year. You just said comedy that you can watch. All right. All right, Ben. One of the two Christmas comedies worth seeing that came out this year. It's important. Okay. Benji, why don't you kick us off? Violent Night, what'd you think? I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was uh, was fun and made all of the the jokes it needed to. It really went into that ridiculousness, like Mm -hmm. mixed between Die Hard and Elf, probably. Um. (laughs) Like the you know everybody pray, I think, believing. I, 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 I think it was a mix of Die Hard and The Northman. Yeah, yeah. I think it I was gotta, mostly honestly, the Die Hard. Actually, I got I gotta like take got a ca- caveat I'll, to I'll you that. calling it a Christmas comedy. Like it is, it it, it does have funny moments, but I honestly comedy. feel like this might be one of the best, like at the very least, the best Die Hard esque action movies made in like in a, in a while. You know, I, yeah. like I feel like it's it's. Among the subgenre of action, it's honestly up there. Like, I mean, obviously, it's like it's it's funny that like it's Santa, but like it's also like it's like the action is good enough that even if you weren't intrigued by it, I for me honestly, I think it's absolutely worth yeah. Worth no, I, seeing. yeah. The action's entertaining, but I do think it's definitely a comedy. It's different from Die Hard, where like when people die, like, you don't really know who's gonna die, that people feel like they're actual people when they die, whereas in this, it's more comedic, like, the guy with the star in his eye coming at him, like, with yeah. adrenaline and then lighting on fire. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely, it's like an action comedy. It's heightened. It's heightened. I, I, I grant you that. Yeah, you know, but it's, it's definitely more action than comedy in the action yeah. comedy. Yeah. I'd yeah, say yeah. it's more comedy than Die Hard. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, yeah, that's yeah. But I, 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 I was genuinely surprised, surprised by how good this film was. Like, even if it was just like a, an entire joke, I probably still would have enjoyed it. Yeah. But the fact that this one, like, honestly worked on so many levels, I don't know. I feel like this. I feel like this was like a real like. 2022 has been a surprisingly good year for like comedic comedic christmas it, films i, I would put it this way like I, I wouldn't say it's like a groundbreaking film but it's a solid film it's from the producers of john wick which i definitely got that yep <laughs> like especially when uh he, he's going through all the names that they call him yeah like, oh yeah this is john wick <laughs> um <laughs> But I, I will say that, like, it's definitely a more cliche film. I still think it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would I would not say it's as high quality as, like, a John Wick, which is the highest bar I could probably get to a straight, like, action film. You know, mm-hmm. that's four out of four. I would give this one, like, three out of four. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's, it's a very fun film and very entertaining. Action's great. Um, and there's just a few things here and there. I, I would have loved to see less CGI and more practical kills, mm. but I'm a horror guy, so that's always what I'm going gunning for. It's easier to do CGI, but it's definitely more rewarding to see kills when it's practical effects. Mm. Yeah, it still I, I had it still yeah, had them. Though. I I really noticed it with the um when he kills someone and like leaves the I forget what he kills them. Skate. Yeah, the nice yeah, yeah. Eight, and then <laughs> yeah, the... falls, but you could see the yeah. it's like really CGI. Mm, that's fair. That's um, fair. But I mean, other than stuff like that, I thought it was very good, very fun. Mm. Yeah, it's, no, it's a movie. I don't. I mean, you can't say much more. Yeah, I mean but... the fact, the fact, like the the fact that like Santa, like when he's pulling out like gifts to try to defend himself, and it's like <laughs> video game, video yeah. game, Die Hard on Blue Blu-ray. It's like I, I feel like it's like that's. 
That was that was just perfect. Yeah. That was like it, it it encapsulates like the vibe oh, that the film that, is going. I for. loved I loved the uh, for, they had a very good foreshadowing moment, which I mean, uh, you know, films like this do, but I thought it was done very well. Which is they make the Home Alone joke, like yeah, yes, he had yes. yeah. The thing about the that then is that Fandango called this movie a combination of Die Hard and Home Alone. It's like it's Die Hard meets Home Alone. Okay, that that's yeah, but there that's was a, one scene of home. Yeah, alone. and it was, it was fun, nice but it's but that's not. Fun. It, it wasn't so much to home alone. I yeah. felt misled by that, and yeah, that that, that that that's misleading. You know, no, it's, it's, it's like yeah. Die Hard and like I don't know, like I really got Elf from the Christmas. Like, there's a lot of emphasis on people believing in Christmas. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the grumpy old grown-ups who don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a Christmas that. film. Like that's it, kind of part of what a christmas yeah. film is yeah it's like and so yeah. it wasn't even like a specific christmas film mm-hmm. i mean the part that i got elf from the most was when he balled at the snowball and like did the will ferrell dive in that mm-hmm. was at central park or whatever yeah, was yeah, yeah. it was snowball. very like, self-referential in terms yeah. of christmas movies mm-hmm. and maybe that's just like hey we somehow have access to all this ip let's use it mm-hmm. but also mm-hmm. it might have just been you know screw it let's have a ton of fun yeah i think i think christmas movies while also making one yeah i think i think i think they're probably going for fun fun more than anything else and like yeah, paying homage think, to other i think uh i mean not that they referenced elf but i got a lot of the same feelings like you know when he goes to a bar and it's the real santa versus you know other santa you know similar to like the real elf versus the fake mm. elves yeah. Um, and then at the end is I think the most where he literally comes back to life from Christmas spirit. Just yeah. Like, well, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. 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 That, that 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 was like that was like oh they're they're doing Which I know like, it's a classic Christmas, Christmas movie. movie thing. But like not a lot of Christmas movies have Santa Claus. I feel like it's especially in that way. You know. Uh, what do they? I guess it's magical realism. You know. Mm. I want to hear from our guest on the panel tonight. Oh, hey, thanks. Aiden <laughs> just walked out of the theater. And walked into this episode, so uh, oh, let's, really? Aiden, what are your rapid yeah. reactions to uh, Violent Night? Um, so I unfortunately think I suffered a little bit from misreading the like. Did you read it as Silent on. Night? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, from when I uh, went on the AMC website to to look at like the show times and tickets, I read it as a group of criminals like went to attack the North Pole and hold that hostage, and then Santa went violent on them, which is a movie that I much would have preferred seeing. I would love to see that movie. I would love to make that. Should be, that should be Violent Night 2. That should unironically yeah. be Violent Night 2. Yeah, I thought, um, so I was a little disappointed when I got in and it wasn't that. Uh, but that's not the movie's fault. Um, Are you t- saying that I, you took offense to the fact that it took place in Greenwich, Connecticut? I, I wanted to mention that. Like, like they yeah, made I, rich I think people it, from uh... Greenwich, Connecticut, the good guys. <laughs> I mean, kind of, but yeah, it's Christmas they magic. Did, yeah, they they definitely made them the bad guy, like not the bad guys, but not good guys for a lot of the movie as well. I no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the light Lightstone is that the name? The like, name? Whitestone. Yeah, I think that's right. Whitestone. So they uh, superhero hero. But, or something. but they uh, kind of suck. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> as people. Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, so I think, um, I think that was what, anyway, that was, once I realized that I had misread the, the movie mm-hmm. description, I, I had a much better time. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love the, um, yeah, I thought that it did a great job of being like the action comedy. I could have used like more Christmas references, like when he, he mm-hmm. stitches himself up and then ties like a ribbon and wrapping paper around the wound. I thought that moment was like really funny and wish there were a few more of like the I, I Christmas agree. specific. When the guy, uh, when he puts the grenade in the guy, I was really waiting for him to say Merry Christmas right before he blew up. Yeah. That would have, I mean, that would have, he did say stocking not, stuffer though. He's yeah. not John McClane. He doesn't need the one liner before every kill. Yeah, but that was so perfect. It's just it, 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 that like would have been like action. The moment perfect. was right. Yeah, one I agree. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I did enjoy him saying, I know I got a look or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And turn around as 
that's the guy blew up. Um, he was almost like breaking the fourth wall there. Mm, yeah, yeah a little bit. Christmas magic. Yeah. He was tapping on the. He was, he was knocking on the wall for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know when you did the ho 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 ho, like when you did like the Santa laugh, like yeah. most of those times were in some of those moments where he's like killing someone. It wasn't in like, oh, I gave yeah. a present to a kid, ho yeah. ho ho. It was yeah. like, oh, I just blew this dude up. Right? Like, like, it like I think it was, it was representative of him sort of like getting his groove back since like, you know, the beginning, like he's like, Santa's like in such like a bad, like cynical mood and sort of like, sort of like actually doing good and helping people. I think it's like, it's meant to sort of bring back his, yeah. Like the original, like the reason he's been doing this for so long. Bring back the and I, camera. Uh, kind of on that on that note, I think <laughs> my favorite sequence of the film was in that barn when the um the kill team comes in to to try to take Santa out, and he like you really get the back. I thought they were very the creative. But, uh, yeah, get I mean yeah, getting the sledgehammer. Uh, <laughs> like from that moment on, and then just so many so many ways of killing people. Which that barn must have been enormous mm. uh, yeah. for every person to immediately yeah. not be around him then like, again it is greenwich connecticut some yeah. walls in there <laughs> yeah yeah it was a, a, a multi-room barn uh mm. like a yeah a warehouse but um i'm like not gonna mm. not gonna gripe too much about um you know with religious I, things like that when uh, i think you know, those the, uh, other guys are just there to be mm. slaughtered i think I think the production value of a scene like that in the barn, and let's talk about the the action and how it's sort of portrayed in the movie. I think a scene like that could really benefit from a single take. And I remember thinking this when I was mm-hmm. in the theater, when you've got a really long sequence of, in this case, Santa Claus yeah. kicking ass, one long take, it's incredibly difficult to do, especially when you're going to have sort of the cgi and the you know yeah i think the that's the problem with number of people involved I, I wanted it and i knew it was probably like not feasible but i feel like situations like that like and i hate to reference a joss whedon film but joss whedon is really good at this um in avengers age of ultron of course that's all cgi blue screen all of that when the avengers are defending the uh drill in Sokovia, you get this great slow motion, continuous take of everyone fighting the Ultron sentries. You could have had something similar to that with Santa Claus swinging his hammer around, maybe like follow the hammer through the room. Mm. I I I just, there was something creatively missing from how awesome the violence was. What you're talking about, I think, for the producers of John Wick, I know this is producers, not necessarily directors, but uh, I think it, I can't remember which one, John Wick one or two. There's one uh, long take where he goes into a nightclub uh, with a gun, and it just follows the first one. Away. Yeah, and he just goes through and kills everyone. Mm-hmm. But um, it's one take. I think something like that would work really well. You know, just him going through it with the hammer. Yeah, everybody. I I do exactly I do saying. have to I do have to like. I will say in defense of the filmmakers, I do think uh, to an extent the single the single take action scene has become a bit. I, I for me, I do feel like I'm I'm worried it's becoming slightly over, not oversaturated. That's too strong a word, but like, but like for lack of a better term, what, like what over- is the ratio be, between heavily cut action scenes and one take? Because I think it's like ninety nine to one. No, yeah. no, no, for sure. I'm just, I'm just talking about like in the present day. I just, I just, I, I understand why the filmmakers chose not to do it. You know, I, just, you know, I but, think the only reason that you would choose not to do that is because it's a lot harder to do. Hmm. I mean, I don't think that it's oversaturated. Almost no action films that I see have like a good one take, you know, shot like the John Wick film. That's pretty rare. So it's very hard to do. You have to have really good choreography. You hmm. have to have really good effects. You have to figure out what you're going to do with the whether you're doing practical versus mm. CGI. And if somebody screws up on that shot, the entire shot's wasted. Mm. So I think it's just as hard to do. Yeah. I think oh, plus, yeah, especially yeah, no. with a, a film like this, the um like the variety of the kills is really important. Like if he just yeah. swung his hammer and killed so, all yeah, those guys would not have been up any of those in a way as way. fun. Problem. Yeah. Um where yeah, adding things like the ice skates and the uh, snow blower. Mm. Um snow blower is fucking wild. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was nuts. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, that was a um, film because horror does so many of those creative uh, kills. They normally will cut a lot because, I mean, you can't you can't kill someone creatively and not cut. You need to edit, mm -hmm. and without cutting, it can seem really weird. Mm -hmm. Um, so I definitely understand why they did it, but I agree it would have yeah. been fun to see. But I could completely understand it. It's probably really logistically hard to do something like yeah. that, especially with the sheer number of guys who are yeah. in this massive barn. <laughs> mainly the way that they wanted to kill them. I think you can like yeah. in the Whip, they kill tons of people, but it's mainly yeah. just he's shooting them. You know, it's not like yeah. crazy kills. There's not a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. for its place in the film. Uh, it, it's something that you know has to be considered in the just the sequence of events a one take shot is real time so you have to think about the logistics mm -hmm. of killing all these guys in real time when you're already you know ha at this point in the movie having done everything that santa claus has done to this point so i mean i'm, I'm sort of talking myself out of my own idea that i brought up mm -hmm. but at the same time like you know, I, I still would have liked to have seen it. Mm. You know what, George? Yeah. Maybe, maybe they wanted it too, and they're like, "Wait, oh shit, this is way too hard," and that's why it's done. <laughs> it could, maybe. it could be, could be the case. I, I, maybe I personally, the... I, I have no way to like confirm this. I want to be clear, but there's a part of me that wonders: is like, oh, were they originally going to have like Mrs. Claus like? bring the sleigh mm. back like directly directly at the end but then they were like no we can't if we're gonna have mrs claus it needs to be someone famous and we just can't get anyone fam famous so we'll just have to write the note you I know? Don't know if it's about the fame i think it would be hard because you already have a little bit of turmoil where he's like oh i want to see mrs claus again i think you would have to have more of a story and it was true a that is movies. that is true yeah i think in in violent night to gory night when uh mm -hmm. those surviving assassins go and take on the north pole i think yeah. we'll see her then uh, yeah, and perhaps yeah, it'll be a long way like, to get there unironically that like that should be the sequel you know like that yeah. would be amazing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and santa i think is going to figure out how to use guns in the, in the interim uh yeah. i love what it's like when it's like anyone know how to use these gizmos i hunted with my dad here and like just throws it like the assault yeah. rifle. And her her excitement at shooting a guy, uh, which obviously was in the balls because that's the type of movie this was, uh, <laughs> was was uh, a disarmingly charming moment for the type of act that it was. She was like, "Oh," mm -hmm. and then yeah, like, um, the guy is like, oh. "I don't think." Yeah, let's let's talk about the the family that we're mm. dealing. We'll get to talking about David Harbor in a few minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. this this you know upper class privileged rich family in Greenwich, Connecticut. But you repeat yourself. <laughs> Synonyms, I know. Um, I think that's why the coach is in here. <laughs> probably. Um he felt personally attacked. Yeah. That's why he's taking the <laughs> off. Uh so you've got this family that, you know, ordinarily Christmas time you wouldn't really find yourself rooting for these people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's very much, you know, look at how lavish our Christmas is. Look at all of our staff, all of our gifts, all of our giant tree. It, it's, you know, you, you don't think that you would root for this family. And then they end up being sort of the victims of this, you know, yeah, attack I feel like on you, Christmas. You don't really, you root for like parts of the family. I feel like yeah. everyone is rooting for Morgan to fucking die. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. the one yeah. like this. This is this Sorry, is like this thought. is more like pulling like trying to find flaws than having true than a true critique. But the one thing I kind of felt like was slightly missing from the film was like some Street. sort of comeuppance for the. For the like bad family mem members, you I know, feel like the like, whole thing is they came together for Christmas, not like, necessarily like, in the normal way. But hey, hey, Edie Patterson, Patterson gives the performance of a lifetime here. The fact that she can do her role in Knives Out and her role in this, uh, she has range that. Oh I did right, not know that is her. her. Oh my yeah, gosh, sorry, saw, just, I just realized. Get out of here! Stop it. Out. We have four like people that. without you. Gary. <laughs> um 
but she but was you know, great. Like, you know, yeah. everyone felt, you know, almost. I, I don't want to say caricatures, but I kind of do. Mm, yeah. Um, of this sort of stereotypical rich family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, Max, you've been, uh, you've been pretty quiet. What do you think of this family? I mean, they fucking suck. <laughs> um, other than the three that are like they're they were introduced to first, like they're fine. Um, I mean, Jason I get, also kind of sucks. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think he really does. He, I mean, I think he's definitely the most flawed out of the three of them. But I also think like it's kind of valid that you know. I want to steal money from my mom because she sucks and I've had this awful life because of her and I yeah. want to provide for my family. Like, would I do that? No. Um, because, but like, he's not, he's not like a bad person. Like the yeah. other three, they suck. Or yeah. the other four, they yeah. suck. They're awful yeah. people. And like, <laughs> you, would, you, would, you would never root for them. And I, like, I get it. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I mean, I I don't think you needed to have them get get their get theirs or have a taste of their own medicine, yeah. sort of like what Declan mentioned. I don't think yeah. you need it. Mm. It just I... would have felt kind of unnecessary because it's like mm -hmm. they went through like four hours of this bullshit of being held hostage and at gunpoint. Like, what is going to happen? I feel like Santa gives them an actual lump of coal like that. I don't know. I think that would have been kind of stupid personally the only guy that got his justified you know um punishment is morgan because he just <laughs> all around sucks and he's like even worse than all of the sucky parts of the family because he literally jumps out of window and, <laughs> <laughs> and also it also as the gift that was a great scene he, he just... <laughs> as the gift he gives he gives the pitch the, the pitch for his <laughs> <Yeah>. movie <laughs> the, the pitch thing <laughs> <laughs> the pitch deck was so funny. Oh God, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big uh, star in uh, Asia. Asia. Parts, parts of Asia. Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually couldn't even go to parts of Asia. Yeah, yeah we, we've been to some parts of Asia. Oh my God. So good. Uh, the, the dialogue that that family had was one of the high points of the movie. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. They, they, they were a good source of like of the of comedy like kind of in the in the like action comedy th thing. Yeah. 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 I, also also I, I, I should also say to be fair arguably like the comeuppance I was sort of thinking of was, was sort of at the end when they all believe in Santa to help like say save him like in that in that that arguably shows a character change. I I just I kind of wished it could have been a bit a bit stronger. Like I don't know, Gertrude throwing her favorite whiskey onto the fire or something like that. I don't know. I, don't know. Money, I have I a question for the, I have a counter question to that though, Declan. Please. Uh why the hell would she bring the whiskey on the snowmobile? Fair point. Fair point. You know, that's um, that's like a good one. I, I, if they, if the filmmakers had decided to, to do it, I feel like the screenplay is well constructed enough that they could have included like a set set up at the beginning, like she had a secret whiskey second, I feel like compartment in her shoe or something like something I feel like, like that. You know, but like nonetheless, nonetheless, I am not the screenwriter, so. I, I do not know the exact perfect setup to have where which would lead to her having the whiskey at the end. I will I don't say understand that. the things you have suggested in this movie, there's a reason that the screenplay works. It's because there's not like a bunch of clutter like that. I think Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> like I said, like I said, it's it's a finding a flaw rather than like an actual I mean thing. it's fun to think about like just that scene, but in the background of the movie i feel like you you'd find it hard to fit that in mm -hmm. exactly exactly so like i understand I, why it's not I'm there just not there skin your shoe. Like, 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 like i'm just i'm, I'm just like literally shoe. spitballing you, no, here no, without okay, okay, right shoe. okay but declan you went for the shoe and not like <laughs> a secret compartment in the snowmobiles or something Gosh. like that. And well, like, theoretically the snowmobile is even though the snowmobile break in her shoe no, I, like think, I think I think we're getting a like little off task from Greenwich, so we can imagine they're really solid shoes. You know, <laughs> we'll have to ask Chip. Coach. Yeah, that's true. If you guys hadn't picked up on that by now, Chip's new nickname is Coach. We we had a whole thing in the group chat. Moving on. 
um so david harbour all right oh yeah look we yep. gotta talk about david harbour the um, one he's he's not i got a whole setup here that i prepared oh, sorry. Man. go ahead the whole thing mute yourself for 10 minutes you fool no <laughs> you grinch okay um i don't have anything prepared um but you know david harbour you wouldn't think of him as santa claus even after seeing him as red guardian and black widow you wouldn't think the guy would play Santa Claus in his career. And maybe this is the only version of Santa Claus that would appear, uh, appeal to him. Um, but yeah, I, I thought, who has you know, seen the, Stranger Things on this podcast? Because this is an important question. I've seen, I've seen the first of Stranger Things. I've seen the first season. This is, that's, that's the problem. Because if you'd watched Stranger Things, well, I may not play Santa Claus. You know he can play a drunk hero really well. Oh, right? absolutely! I'm not. I'm not well, saying yeah. he can't. Yeah, he's saying a like the typical, <laughs> the typical Christmas movie Santa Claus. You would not expect David Harbor, knowing <laughs> that he's played a character like Hopper in Stranger lot. Things. Well, yeah, yeah, I got a lot from the Hopper's performance. Like it's Stranger Things. I find they're very similar characters. Mm. It has an estranged wife. Um, who, you know, he had like, uh, essentially, yeah, he's got a strange wife. He's given up believing himself. He's like a cop. But he it's not until he finds a little girl that he rediscovers his confidence in himself and decides to save the town. So, oh, that's true. He's that's violent true. Knife just die hard <laughs> Stranger Things. <laughs> you know, one thing I got to give. <laughs> that's it's like, I accept that. that. That was all I was trying to give. <laughs> I got to give him credit for, like, which is especially weird to say, given that he li- he literally was this for only like a millisecond. I feel like his he did a really good job as a Viking. Like when they showed him, I, like like it, I was again I, like I'm both glad we didn't see much time of him as Nicomund the Red, but also no, like I, I feel like in the Nicomund brief the like, flashes so we saw of him, I was like, wow, he he's also good as a Viking, you know? Like, like I, 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 I definitely could have used more Nicomund the Red. Um, yeah. Santa Viking. Yeah, I, uh, this was audition uh, for the Northman part two. Um, <laughs> um yeah, I, I I love that like initial flat like just the flashback when he first like passes out I think after he, he stabs the guy in the eye with the star mm. and then we True. I guess he he tells the story to uh, to Trudy I think and we we learn a little more but I was waiting to hear more for like most of the rest of the movie like not necessarily how he became Santa Claus I would have liked that but yeah, I don't that's, know. that's okay to just leave the mystery. Like- it's much better that they didn't explain it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, but the, was, uh, oddly enough, it was just how it happened in the Santa Claus when Tim Allen becomes Santa Claus. Yeah. He was a Viking <laughs> who made Santa fall off a roof, and then he was like, "Guess I'm Santa now." I'm yeah, slightly yeah, surprised Claus, there wasn't some oh, joke Santa. like, "Like, what? Do, yeah. do we, can we just put on your coat and become come you or something like that?" You know. Like, yeah, I, I, I did off. expect a reference to that. He mentioned Rudolph, but I wanted to see Rudolph. Mm, yeah. yeah. What happened to Rudolph? Yeah, yeah did he kill Rudolph? Rudolph, Rudolph, Rudolph died. Died. He put Rudolph, him in the you know, is, He's faced Rudolph a lot of bullying in his off. life. He deserves maybe, Christmas off every now and then. Maybe he's on like long-term injury preserve. Rudolph or something. is on PTO. Oh, you know what? Um, I know what it is. Yeah. He lost Rudolph in the divorce with Mrs. Claus. <gasps> Wait, mm. I didn't know that. Hey, I, hey now. Are they it's actually not, it's not, it's not, not, not clear. Are they, they divorced? Oh, or are they, not, or are they just like fighting? No, they're I, think, I, think, I think it's like fighting slash separation. Because like 1,100 years, I get it. Like that's a long time. Like there's going to be some conflict. I get it. Oh. Uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought David Bad Harbour was, he was as advertised, you know, you see him in the trailer kicking ass, mm. you get the, the best line in the entire movie, which was unfortunately spoiled in the trailer, which was time for some seasons beatings. <laughs> Just <laughs> the best line. No, I really liked Santa Claus was coming to town. It's not a play on words, though. It's just what's happening. He's describing the action. <laughs> well, he also he does he also he also he's we the action. I, I would Santa say he's doing a great job in the action scene. You know? <laughs> he's technically not going to a town. He's going to a compound. Okay. Okay, but I get what George was saying, and I liked it. I enjoyed <laughs> his comment. So shut up, Ben. Yeah, Ben, we have four without you. Get out. <laughs> Bye.
You know, you know, already one missed moment. last episode. Can I, can I, can I be honest with you guys about something? One moment that, no, like, I would prefer you lie. Thank you. <laughs> one moment that I like bizarrely loved was just like the moment when like David Har- Harper, like as Santa, like is trying to leave and then all of a sudden sees like the entire family and especially like Trudy, like held mm-hmm. hostage under arm and like just silently chooses to like go back to save people like i don't know why yeah. for some reason that was like like that just like was i was like moved by that moment well, you know i don't know it was a really powerful I mean, that's a... the inherent you know goodness of mm. trudy and i think you know what we see in santa claus in that moment is mm. all right time to go to work like yeah i, I can't, I can't yeah. just let this happen and go on with my night you know, I know that that's a good kid. I know that these people, while flawed, have good mm. qualities. Time to save Christmas. Yeah. Did you guys read what, uh, you know, the nice people and naughty people were? I like the Trudy's. It was like, listens to her parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There, there was, there was like. Those are homework they, they, on time. I, we, to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I saw, I, I saw for, for Mr. Scrooge, like, one of the things. Don Logan's almost. Let's like, talk about him. Was oh yeah yeah was killed his best friend or something like that. Yes, killed his yeah, yeah killed his best friend. The, yeah. uh, Fred's misery was one of them or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I also I wish I like if his one finds his way on Netflix or Hulu or something. I wanted to look at the names of like the goons mm. that were were on there. Cause I think the one that I caught was uh, Brennan O'Neill, who I don't think anyone. Had, this pod will know that maybe George, but he's one of the best college lacrosse players right now. I don't think that's like <laughs> land at all. I think I would guess it's just the names of like crew people, but uh, still would have been fun to see if they put any joke ones in there. Oh man, um, yeah. was this or, thing yeah, like work? I uh, we, we didn't get last name right for Bjorn. I think it was just I Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah, you just I, I think he just calls him Bjorn. Bjorn. Oh, but probably Bjorn he just calls him Bjorn. It's well, probably Bjorn Bjorn's out of prison for like tax evasion. So. No, 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 that's not Bjorn Borg. That's Boris Becker. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> one, also, one thing I gotta point out, which I do find funny, I, I think I think this was intentional, is that in a way, John Linguizamo as the villain um in this film is is full circle because he's actually in Die Hard 2. But That's his, right, role, he is. his role just, was like apparently like entirely cut almost. So with, with the snowmobiles. Yeah, the snow- so snowmobiles. many Die Hard 2 feelings. Mm-hmm. Also, they're going up to like a little compound, just like yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 The soldiers coming in, coming in who turned yeah. out to be bad guys. It's just like Die Hard 2. But the Morgan was was the icing on top. I love that thing. It was like, oh yeah, I think they're ready for. Oh yeah, I've 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 done some training as a as a soldier, you know. My role. Yeah, yeah. It's for the uh, troops, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I, 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 I was just yeah incredible. I, I like I, I liked how John Leguizamo hating Christmas, like it didn't it felt it was it was a little ridiculous, but it didn't feel like absurd absurd or something like that. Like it yeah. somehow managed to make him despising Christmas feel like a like like it, it made it made it make sense. Like and I, uh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm know? just I'm connecting a couple dots here. Was his neighbor's grandfather? his best friend that's yeah like i'm slightly wondering if that was supposed to be the other thing i was almost thinking was being set up was that the grandfather was actually gertrude's father and she killed him somehow like that doesn't make sense so like it didn't happen but like i was honestly like wondering is like oh was gertrude actually the person who killed him and she blamed mr scrooge or something maybe maybe it was and she killed Bertrude and made it seem like Bertrude wasn't a real person. Oh and that, my god. She keeps saying that Bertrude isn't a real name. Or <laughs> just hear me out. Well, to be fair, Bertrude is not a real name. It is not. The <laughs> movie, the movie that John Leguizamo's character is working on in the menu is Violent Night. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. That's, wow. that's accurate. <laughs> Yeah, I you know I, I can't believe these Hollywood uh, screenwriters missed all these dots to connect. 
<laughs> well, that's what we do a podcast for, is to connect the dots for our why sons. Santa's real in the menu universe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he finds it's just disappointing because he didn't get the uh, the fry cooking, you know, uh, device yeah. that he wrote to Santa so many times. That's why he mm. became this really disappointed chef. Well, also because he could never perfect his recipe for milk and cookies. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he couldn't because Sam being outshone by children, he kept getting harsh notes recipes. from Santa Claus about how bad his <laughs> cooking and his milk was. And you're you're gonna love this one. That's how he turns into Lord Voldemort. <laughs> by the way, guys, um, completely random, but I did read the full screenplay for the menu. And I'm disappointed by one thing, mm-hmm. sort of aside. But at the end, they were supposed to have Ray Fine's like hands cut off and his head cut off, holding the menu. <laughs> that was okay, that... the final <laughs> shot. <laughs> and I really want to see that. That would have been interesting. Tell you, you know, what, to... Ben, I will my my Hanukkah gift to you will be photoshopping that myself. <laughs> you know. You know, I saw someone describe the menu and I laughed really hard, hard at this. And I say this as a fan of the menu is they used to the quote from Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. I know many writers who use subtext and they're all cowards. <laughs> which if you which if you're a fan of Garth Marenghi's Dark Dark Place, I think, you know, yeah, <laughs> it was all, all right. you should watch. Yeah. That. That's, that's an accurate way to describe that movie. Question for you all. Sort of go around one at a time. I've, I've got you all set up in a certain way, but you can talk in whatever order you want. Okay. okay. Favorite, we haven't done this in a while. Favorite scene in Violent Night. Let's start with Max. Cool. All right. <clears throat> I got one ready to go. My favorite scene, um, sort of like Declan, was one was more of a like, like a nice like holiday Christmas scene more than <laughs> like like okay I'm not picking the snowblower um <laughs> but it was it was when he was talking to Trudy for the first time in like an extended way mm-hmm. and kind of explaining who he was you know how he became Santa Claus from you know Viking lore um and I don't know I just really like that because it it kind of like solidified the belief in Christmas, the belief in in Santa for her, um, and you could see that in the way that she she you know did that scene, and I just like that, and it was kind of like a this is like a Christmas movie, and I like that. I'm enjoying it, um, and it made I don't know, it made me smile in the theater. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. I figured out. I would kept thinking, man, that those flashbacks to the Viking scenes really made me think of something and I finally figured it out. I think only one other person here, his name is Declan, was someone that's seen this movie. Um, but it's called uh The Cabinet uh, of Dr. Caligari. No, um I've seen one. Oh now I've forgotten. Yeah. Oh no. What what's the uh um, class? The nineties movie, Declan, with um uh-huh. Clam McCloud. Or the Clam McCloud. Oh, it was a Highlander. Highlander. Oh, the Highlander. Yeah, the, the Highlander. Mm-hmm. Oh, he dies in battle and then he comes back. (laughs) Oh, that's an interesting. That's an interesting comparison. Yeah, knowledge at the end of that is just becoming Santa Claus. (laughs) It's is uh, that what you win when you win the Highlander competition? Is become Santa? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! The quickening. Oh my god! Wait! Oh my god! (laughs) Is that to be understood as your favorite scene, Ben? The Viking flashbacks. Um. I very much enjoyed that. Honestly, I was a big fan. They didn't even, before the flashbacks happened, when he took off his shirt and he could see all the Celtic mm. dots and mm. stuff. Um, no, those a- are left over from when he was Red Guardian. <laughs> yeah. Russian, <laughs> Celtic. Yeah. Mm. Both cold, cold places. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's something that, you know, not a lot of people like to delve into, but... Mm. It's uh, a pagan tradition, the winter, winter solstice. Mm. Um, the Roman nice. Saturnalia, there were many celebrations, but they they trace uh, the tradition of Christmas, as we know, it back to um, 
technically, uh, I think the British Isles and Celtic traditions there, but yeah, yeah. would have been brought over from the Vikings. Mm -hmm. um, just to my knowledge. Don't quote me on that. I'm not mm -hmm. a historian of those places, but yeah, I thought it was nice to see a uh, a different backstory mm -hmm. and to sort of see a, I don't know, even if they don't tell us how he becomes Santa Claus, make him feel like a more real person than like a magic fairy tale. Like yeah. the fact yeah. that he was human before makes him more human. Um, so I thought, yeah, those were some good scenes. Um, unexpected and give a surprising amount of depth to the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In very little Can't time. Can't wait to, to, to learn more about him in Silent Night 2. Or yeah. Violent Night 2, sorry. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> 40 minutes ago, I knew that it. Is, that is not what got me confused. But I There's was a horror about. film called Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking of when you, when you kept saying Silent Night. <laughs> Garbage day. Is it, is it scene uh, Aiden uh, Declan. I think uh, I would. I, now that uh, Max mentions that scene of Santa explaining his, his backstory connecting with Ruby, I did really uh, enjoy that scene. Um, I, I I do think I'm going to go with the um, the scene of the barn though, with killing all the the built-in goons. Um, I mean, that's like scenes like that are, are what you go to a movie like this for. Mm -hmm. um there's like a good amount of like comedy kills um just seeing santa be like a badass viking is fun um yeah like that's that's kind of where he where he got his mojo i did feel a little bit bad about stuffing the grenade under the one guy's shirt at the end so like he just wanted to leave but you know you, you try to kill santa you uh get in the face by a reindeer or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and and for me, I mean, I already mentioned, and I think my favorite scene is still has to be the moment when Santa's in in the woods and chooses to go back to save save them. You know, he mm. it's, it's almost all silent, and he just looks at the cookie. But it just it was like shockingly moving. But He's to with the Santa cookie too. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, and all that. It, it just it just it was a great moment. But I would say my second favorite scene that I'll, I'll mention here is on is honestly like the final climax like like the fight between mr scrooge and santa with the ha hammers and then like you know and then the moment when like mr scrooge is like like about to kill kill him and then it's like it's like this will be the last christmas ever and then it's like not if you believe and then like and touches his no nose and it's like it's like you know it was already set up and so then he like grabs mr scrooge and brings him through the chimney i i thought that was a great a great like final like climax to the anyone to else, the entire movie i thought that was great oh, anyone okay. else gets skyfall vibes from the last sequence <laughs> i see i see what you're talking about yeah yeah <laughs> that's because there's a blown up here. house and snow and people die mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was expecting some there to be more like someone falling through the ice, you know, just like Skyfall or something like that. I was expecting more candy cane kills and ice school kills. Mm -hmm. I it, but I, I honestly thought there were gonna be more. Yeah. I thought that they were gonna stab someone in the eye with an icicle. Yeah. Uh, a Christmas well, story. Yeah. Like, Do you get they'll have your is, eye out, kid. This <laughs> is my favorite scene just coming full circle. Mm -hmm. Is the first fight. You get the uh, sort of icicle or you know, sort of spear-like thing poking up yeah, outside. So like, so you like. see that. You know it's going to come into play later. You don't know when. Mm -hmm. But then he fights the first guy. And then they both go flying out the window. Yeah. And he's impaled on this stake. And, you know, you got this great shot of Santa Claus, David Har David Harbour sort of close up and he's looking around and then you just see the first part of the yeah. dead body next I, to him. I, that's a I think you know it's coming like well before oh, he's yeah. actually in frame. As soon as they go out the window, you know it's coming because you've already <laughs> seen the stake. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my favorite scene because it like Aiden, exactly like you said, that's the kind of thing, like that's why you go to these kinds of movies. Mm -hmm. You want to see yeah. something like that. Uh, and if I could ask a related question, what was everyone's favorite kill in the movie? That first one. Um, my favorite kill. It's kind of tough. No, Scrooge, at the end. But yeah, I think I gotta go with Scrooge. The um, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Ben, I'm yeah, surprised I'll... yours wasn't yeah. Morgan. Uh huh. I'm surprised uh, yours wasn't Morgan. 
Well, I mean, it's 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 one of it's a great scene. I wouldn't say that Kill is anything like to write home about, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, Morgan dies. <laughs> it's just. <weird. laughs> I do like I do like Bjorn. Uh, I'll I'll say I'll say it's um Bjorn's death where where I'm like, sure. like I'll be honest. I don't think Bjorn's dead. Okay. Yeah. He's gonna show up. I, I, I actually don't think he's dead. He's the only one that probably still alive. Like, in, in a way, what I appreciate about Bjorn's death and, and the he's entire a nail sequence, in the middle of his forehead. Yeah, but his is soul is really hard. And, you know, it's just uh, his presumed death. Yeah, it's like um, I, I appreciate that. It's like it's it's what we're all thinking when we watch the climax of Home Alone. And now we get to see someone actually die from the booby traps. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah the, I thought those booby traps were so creative. Um, that Trudy puts together? I, I, hmm. Yeah, I thought Bjorn's uh, death was probably my favorite too. Um, even though it was really tough to watch because how prolonged it was. Yeah. Like the the <laughs> the nail through his mouth. Oh, was not oh man. Yeah, that, that was, was brutal. So yeah, that was really clever. It, and then, it gave me the same feeling as when you watch Marv step on a nail in Home Alone. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, but it's so much more painful. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. I didn't. But, like, I didn't really feel bad for him when he was like holding the nail up to him like that. That, like, that was pretty dumb. On his that, that's my one thing. Why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was. Like, you know it's a nail, bro. I wonder what's gonna happen now. Yeah, it was like, it was a nail that was inside your mouth. It is going to be covered in blood. Uh, that yeah, so that. His butt. Oh yeah, that's right. That was one on the floor. Blood like shoots out. And he's like, "Oh, is this from me?" Yeah. Um, yeah, there are a few, a few moments where it's like, all right, you're being a little contrived to get here, but that like, comes with the territory. And then mm-hmm. it's, it's a perfectly ridiculous movie. Yeah. So like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I liked when they killed Krampus because that guy annoyed me. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He like really bothered me from the moment he opened his mouth. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. all right. I mean, I like it him. is the worst one. It is tough to play those like psychopath killer characters mm-hmm. in, this, I think, especially comedy, like action movies like this because. The line of being like creepy but also funny is hard to walk, and a lot of people go into like, yeah, creepy, annoying, um, which I think this, uh, this poor man might have has yeah, done. Yeah. He was a bit, bit. for for his own good. Mm. Like the hashtag plus was was too much for me. It was way too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... So Violent Night is, just as we wrap up here, it is, I think we can say, you know, up there in Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. We all enjoyed it uh, to varying degrees. I, I think we can say across the board. Um, Still playing in movie theaters. Came out at the end of November, but right now still playing in some movie theaters. Yeah, Aiden I just watched it today. It before we yeah. recorded the episode. I saw um, it two days ago. <laughs> you can rent it online because I couldn't find it anywhere. Close it is up. also available to rent. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it did. I haven't yeah, seen yeah, it just, in like three you, weeks. You can rent it for twenty dollars. It's like the early yeah. access. I will be That's waiting cool. for it to stream somewhere. Yeah. All right. Either go to theaters or you pay for it at home. Mm-hmm. If you're watching it with two people, it's pretty much the same price. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Good way to look at it. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. Um. All the things I said at the end of the Broken Chess episode that dropped a couple days ago. <laughs> um. Yeah, we will see you, four out of the five of us here, we'll see you next week. Aiden will see you on Broken Chess. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, we, we will be back with our top five lists for 2022 next week. Mm-hmm. Get ready for that, because it's going to be a whole heck of a lot of fun. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy Violent Night, enjoy the holidays. We'll see you next week. One more ride in 2022. Don't fall on ice. See ya. Merry hey, Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And a happy new year. Okay, good night.